Uh, today is uh, March 13th, 2022, and uh, I have a whole bunch of uh, artworks to uh, float. And uh, I just wanted to uh, do a video on how to uh, float the um, artwork with mats. And uh, that's where we have two layers of uh, foam core underneath the art and underneath the mat. So they just kind of magically are suspended there. Um, also on the list today is floating five pieces uh, without a, a mat beyond the edge. Um, so these are just floated directly onto a black mat. So you will have a about a these are three quarters of an inch bigger than the outside dimensions of the paper and then when I get the lip of the frame and the spacer in it'll be about a half an inch all the way around showing that edge uh, but they'll all have the same technique of taking a couple uh, levels of uh, foam core board and um, putting that underneath and uh, I'm going to set up my tripod and lights and stuff when I uh, show you how to do this in detail and I'm going to use this um, elephant picture that we featured in the video of how to select mats and frames. Okay I've got the uh, tripod and lights set up and um, we'll see if I can keep everything uh, uh, in focus and in the line of the screen. Again, I'm trying to do this myself, so we'll see if this uh, works. But um, So here's the uh, elephant picture with the mat. And uh, everything is ready to go now. What I like to do is put the mat upside down on the piece that it's going on. And then uh, tape it into position so that it's not going to... Uh, move out of position and the reason I turn it upside down is I don't want to take the chance of any uh, glue or anything going on the um, mat face up because this is going to get a uh, butterfly hinge with micro dots of glue and um, the butterfly hinge could probably hold it alone. Uh, I would say it's a 50-50 chance, but um, we don't want to take the uh, risk of, you know, 10 years from now, the piece coming uh, loose in the frame. And uh, so we'll um, do it uh, with the micro dots and I'll uh, show you that here in a second. I had to reposition this on the board because it wasn't quite square. So there. And uh, notice I have my tick marks down here so I know where the bottom is. And um, what I do is measure the size of the artwork and then I cut uh, two acid-free foam core boards that are um, an inch smaller than the size of the uh, artwork. So in other words a half an inch will uh, be recessed in there. You can kind of see how that lines up. Okay, here we are uh, continuing on the uh, floating of this uh, elephant artwork. And I had a bunch of people in the shop, so I had to um, put this on uh, pause and, and start the next um, uh, video here. So um, what we're doing now is putting together um, two of these um, quarter-inch acid-free boards. They're actually three-sixteenths and we're going to center them in between the uh, mat here and then put the uh, elephant on the top. So what I do is start with uh, 
putting ATG tape all the way around the perimeter of the board. Then I'll do another little square in the center. And then I use um, Arlene's uh, tacky glue. And uh, of course the top is kind of glued to the piece here. Let me stop this while I try and peel this off with a player. Okay, now that I have the top off, um, what I do is just use the glue here and put uh, dots of glue around the um, whole thing, of course, not over the top of the ATG tape. Not that it would matter that much. We're just kind of randomly putting in dots and um, we're just gluing the two pieces together now. So none of this is has to be very exact or anything. It's just a matter to make sure that it's all going to hold. And of course, instead of putting dots, you could put, you know, long strings of um, glue. But I like the dots because I think it holds real well. And then you don't waste a ton of glue. There we go. I'm going to stick these two halves together. Now the next step is to put these two in the center of the uh, board, board that it's uh, laying onto. I'm basically doing it the same way. And of course since we've taped the um, mat upside down under the board we can see exactly where the center of the board is. There we go. And of course the reason I lift the board up is I'm bouncing light off the glossy ATG tape to know where the um, tape is so I don't put glue over the tape. Not that it would hurt anything if it did get over it. It's just kind of a waste to put the glue over the tape. There we go. Now we just center this in the mat there that's upside down and press it in. And here comes a customer again, so I've got to stop this. Okay, now we've got these boards stuck down to the backing. And uh, we're going to put this, uh, float this elephant up here. And I have to shut this off because the dogs are coming downstairs. Okay, here we go again. Um, so now I'm going to put in a couple butterfly hinges. And here's how I do that. I take a board, put it underneath the whole thing. And then I use a 
plunge cut saw and just um, what I'm doing is taking some filmoplast tape and it's going to um, go through two uh, lines into the cut all the way through the board and uh, then the excess tape is going to be uh, folded around the back. And then I take the fringe off and make it smooth again. And I'll even uh, blow off some of the um, particles here. Now I take the filmoplast tape and uh, of course pull out the board that it was on. The only reason the board's there is so I don't cut through the table. And then I um, just start feeding this through the slot that was made. And then I pull it through to the back. Let's see, here's what the back looks like. See, I just pull these tabs tight and press them down. And um, sometimes I have to put more tape to hold it. The Filmoplast tape is a conservation tape, so it's not all that sticky. So, um, and from the front, you can see here's the release uh, paper on it. And then I just do that on this other side. And see, then when you want to pull this off, from the back you just release the tabs that are on the back and then you can pull the um, artwork off without um, having to remove the tape so that when the artwork is off you can then carefully uh, peel the tape back when the art's upside down. But I also uh, 
want to use micro dots on this because the tape um, probably won't hold forever on the um, artwork because it's just not all that aggressively tacky and especially as time goes on with humidity and temperature changes and all that it um, there's a fair chance that it would let loose There we go. And then to do the micro, micro dots, what I do is um, actually use a um, toothpick and um, a little bit of uh, glue. You could put it on a board or anything. And um, and make little tiny dots all around it. And I must admit the heavier the paper the bigger the dots. And this is kind of medium weight paper so I still use very tiny dots. And uh, whenever I went to pull these off you know the rare occasion that um, we're taking it off the board uh, it just comes like a zipper and you can just uh, feel it and hear it go pop 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 as you uh, pull the artwork off the uh, board and then the second step if you want to pull it off is um, loosening the tabs in the back and then the whole thing uh, comes off see it's it's literally teeny tiny dots here and there from the end of a toothpick so there's really not a lot there but without it it's uh, um, not uncommon for them to release over years and that's not fun to have a customer 20 years later say um, hey my piece uh, needs to be rehung again and I usually put a little bit bigger dot in the corners. And a couple things to remember about this micro dot uh, process here is with humidity and temperature changes, if you have dots that are very, very far apart, sometimes with the expansion of the paper and the dots holding it into place, you could get some waves in it, but it's very rare that I've had that happen. And most of these handmade papers are, you know, thicker, high quality papers, and I'm just randomly putting little tiny dots around. And there are times that I get into pieces that are, you know, so. Um, expensive and rare that what I'll do is just put a few clusters of uh, tiny dots around the um, acid-free tape. Because this dot system is not exactly the most uh, conservationally correct thing, but in my mind I am balancing what works and what's practical with what's the most conservationally correct. So there, once I have a lot of dots all the way around, and right now it's real hard to see the white on white dots, so we'll stop there. And then when I put the elephant on, and of course remember I noted where the bottom is with my um, little tick marks at the bottom. So we just center this over those boards and sets us little dots of the adhesive that's not dry yet. You can, you know, shift it around and move it into place um, for quite a bit of time. And of course with a deckle edge, it's um you know, not a straight line anyway. 
So once I get this in a pretty even over that those boards, then I um, lay paper over it. And then I put a sheet of glass over that, making sure that it's, you know, kind of centered, the artwork is kind of centered in there. And I can kind of feel the edge of the outside of the mat to know where it's centered. And then I put weights on it, and of course you can use whatever weights you want, and um, I'm going to put paper. I'm going to put uh, paper over the glass because I don't want the weights to scratch the perfectly scratch the perfectly good piece of glass. And what I'm using for weights is uh, gallon jugs filled with sand. And that's about it. And then we let it sit. Um, usually what I'll do is, um, you know, do one of these in the evening and then let it set overnight. But um, I've got a total of eight things to float. So I'm going to let this set up for maybe an hour and then I'll move it off to another table and still put weights back on it and just keep um, doing all these uh, pieces that I need to uh, float mount. So um, that's about it. Okay, here's the uh, elephant after it's uh, sat underneath some glass and some weights for a while. And uh, you can see I still have to put the spacers under the mat. And uh, I have the other ones all done now. I mean, as far as the spacers under the mat. So you can see how they are kind of magically suspended, kind of floating up over the surface of the mat. And... What ideally you want to do is make sure that the uh, mat is always a little bit higher than the um, surface of the uh, artwork so that when you put glass on it, you don't have the glass contacting the artwork. And you can see on the edge here that there's actually... Um, three layers of foam core, two that are th um, thicker, that are um, about almost twice as thick. They're supposedly three sixteenths, but depending on how they come in the package, some are more like a quarter, and then I have one that's an eighth of an inch, because I'm trying to make sure the glass doesn't contact the piece. And um, in fact, this one, I ended up putting uh, two layers of mat board and then two layers of quarter inch foam core to raise it up uh, enough and um, sometimes I'll just do uh, two layers of thick foam core underneath the mat and then um, two layers of thinner foam core underneath the art and you can see with that um, you know dot system these are uh, on there so they're not you know the art isn't flopping around on the piece it'll it, it'll stay there until you pull on it and on the um, elephant here I'll show you what it looks like at the edge you can kind of see behind it there where there's two two levels of uh, foam core there and that it's um, on there 
without flopping and it's nice and flat and uh, what I've done is pre-cut uh, the spacers that go underneath the mat and um, I just lay them on the uh, back mat with uh, a strip of ATG tape and what I always do is start with the top and bottom pieces and then do the sides and the reason for that is if the ATG tape ever failed you'd have the um, side pieces holding up the top pieces but it's a rare thing that the ATG tape would fail. And uh, what I do is set up the mat cutter for the block sizes with a little guide, especially since I had so many to do that um, I went to the edge of the uh, post-it note here for the uh, three sides. And then since the bottom's a little bigger, I brought the uh, board up to that uh, mark there on the foam core and so then I could just cut a whole bunch of these spacers at the same time and so um, that's about it until I put the glass and the frames and everything on them so uh, I'll uh, show you that as I um, get further along okay now I just uh, ATG these um, spacers to the back of the mat Whoop. and I just run a strip of ATG tape kind of in the center between the edge of the mat and the edge of the art see um, how the one is uh, about a quarter inch higher than the other and I'm using three layers two of the thick and uh, one of the thinner and they're not really that much different but um, it's uh, noticeable if I did all thick it seems to me to be a little higher than I want And you can kind of see the spacing I have because once the mat's on there, when you look from the side, you can kind of see behind it. So you don't want to get too close to what the inside opening of the mat is. And then once I get the top and bottom on, then I just um, measure what the sides will end up to be and cut those. And in this case, I can get two sides out of one strip.
And so there you kind of get the idea that um, you just keep going along with the other two layers and putting a little bit bigger one on the top. And uh, that's about all there is to it. I'll pause this while I put the other ones on because it's basically the same process each time. Okay, now I have all three layers on here. And uh, now I'll just ATG across the center of everything here. put the mat on making sure the little bit bigger uh, mat is at border mat borders at the bottom and then what I do to center it as best I can in the uh, mat is I will um, take a little post-it note and um, fold it in half and then make a little line of um, where the approximate edge of the border is and remember since it's a decal edge the borders aren't even so it's a little trickier than a straight edge to line up I mean like here you can see this sticks up higher that's down lower higher and but you do it kind of as the general overall edges to get it as close as you can. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move it over just a hair. There we go. And then just Press it in. We have the frame all put together, ready to go. So, there we go. I guess I'll have to stand back and reposition the recorder so you get it a good look at it. So there it is. I haven't put the glass on it yet, of course, but um, this is the one that we uh, featured in the How to Select Mats and Frames, and uh, I just love that particular frame with it that relates to the colors and textures of the elephant skin, and I think that's going to look way better than the uh, gold uh, antique frame that was uh, originally uh, thought of by the uh, customer to put on it because it matched a gold lion. I mean a, a lion that had golden -y hair, but um, the gold frame had nothing to do with uh, the colors and textures in this piece. So so that's about it. Now um, uh, you, if you have any uh, uh, questions or want to um, look at our website, it's just www.theframer-fargo.com. Have a great day. Bye.